afternoon. I'm Miranda Fain. And I'm Paula Seves. Wow, that was it. Thank you. <laughs> and this is Breaking News! But today, it's a little bit more like heartbreaking news. No, Miranda, we decided not to go with that Achy joke. break. <laughs> Heart news. This is the last episode of Breaking News, everyone. So, mm. and we for two are absolutely wrecked. We can't eat. We can't sleep. Mm -mm. Last night we walked around the city for hours in our blazers, waxing nostalgic. Mm. Everyone on set is absolutely devastated. Production has virtually come to a standstill. But we here at Breaking News take our jobs very seriously. Raw emotion aside, the news must be broken. And break it we shall. Mm. Tomorrow, April 22nd, is the March for Science. There, proponents of climate change research will make their voices heard in fighting the environmental policies of the current administration. Mm -hmm. With the government not acknowledging the very real and very scary climate change, it's up to us to take that into our own hands. It's important to remain conscious of your carbon footprint and be aware of its monumental effect on our environment. To cut down on our carbon footprint, Paula and I have decided to cut down beef from our diet. That we have. And that's a wrap. Thank you, everyone, for coming. It's been an honor to work with you all. I'm glad you like me and say nice things to me usually. What do you guys say? Tim, one last time. Paula. Anyone? Joe? Joe? Tim? Honestly, I can go by myself. Paula, what are you doing? What? The show is not. Oh my god, is that a burger? No, it's a McGrill, you oh. key brain neo toddler. What? That's. Okay, that insult meant nothing in substance. When do they ever? We literally just told our live studio audience that we were cutting down on beef. It was like the only thing we said we would do to help the environment. Exactly. I've switched my focus over to the promotion of the delectable McGriddle. Two soft, tender to the touch pancakes infused with maple syrup, sandwiching one light as air folded over egg, a blanket like American cheese, and contrary to what some fools like my brightly haired, bushy eyebrowed co host would have you believe, not a beef patty, but rather a perfectly cooked, savory, gently spiced, melt in your mouth sausage patty derived from pigs. That sounds just as bad, but for a different, cuter farm animal. I never said I was perfect, Fane. Okay, your, your partnership with McDonald's aside, why do you think that the show is over? <sighs> Didn't you hear? I saved the environment. No, no, what? Stop, stop it, stop, stop. What are you talking about? What are you, what are you talking about? Well, when we decided to stop eating beef, the American diet's carbon footprint went down 9%. Call it Blockbuster because our environment is back in business, baby. <laughs> No, stop it, stop, stop doing it. We, did, we didn't save the environment. And okay, uh, Blockbuster, it's kind of a lost cause, buddy. We have talked about that. All right, but it did something to help, and then it worked. Do the math. Did you know that the American diet's carbon footprint went down? Yeah, down 9%. Yes, um, I did, mostly because you already said that. But 9% um, isn't a lot, OK? Think about if my phone was on 9% when we went to that U2 concert, I wouldn't have been able to record that video of you tripping a, a Bono. <laughs> yeah, <interesting. laughs> All right, but 9% is a lot. Have you ever had 9% milk? It's fucked up. <laughs> like, like, cows aren't the only source of carbon emissions. What about, like, cars? Can't drive. Lost my license trying to jump over a school bus. <laughs> uh, what about the electricity we use that comes from harmful fossil fuels? Fine, turn that shit off. <laughs> this is nice. Paula. Oh. Paula, that's my leg. I know. <laughs> OK, but, but turning the lights out on the studio won't do anything. If the Trump administration is gutting the EPA and silencing researchers, uh, hey, you know what? Can we get the lights back on? I thank you. I need the spotlight. Thank you. All right, all right. Okay, Miranda, I cut down on beef, so I refuse to have any with you. <laughs> that was good. Uh, so, what exactly is it you suggest I do to help? Well, you can start by going to the March for Science tomorrow, showing your support for climate change research. Our current administration needs to know that America cares about this planet and the safety of future generations. Who cares about future generations? My grandkids are going to be hairy little jerks. Have you seen Doc McStephens? Any kid who watches that is bound to f up society somehow. Look, whether you like it or not, you are a part of the greater society. You are an individual that comprises a minuscule percentage of the people on this earth, and you owe it to them and to this planet to be aware of your effect. OK, I guess I kind of get what you're saying. And this type of climate change affects low-income neighborhoods significantly more. Does that make you fully get it? In 1995, close to 700 people in poor Chicago neighborhoods died in a five-day heat wave. Just imagine what the repercussions will be like with climate change. They could be monumentally detrimental. Yeah, OK, you're right. Thank I you. guess we need to try to do everything we can to stop climate change. Yes, thank you. I do not want Boston to just be underwater, because that would Wait. be. Wait. Will I be underwater like Atlantis? 
No. Oh, that's good. No. So good. Oh my god. <laughs> Wait, if you met a mermaid, would you rather have sex with bottom half fish, oh my top half human, or top half fish, bottom half human? We're on a show. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what? Stop it. Why are you applauding? Please stop encouraging that. Steve. <laughs> Steven. Uh, but on your phone, guys. What? Wait on their phone. Did you plan this ahead? All right. Okay. No, no. She's right. I suppose if we lived in an Atlantis-like society, we would have progressed further than that. I truly don't think you would. <sighs> but here's the news. <laughs> An eight-year-old hijacked his dad's car to get a snack at his local McDonald's. And let me tell you, with this kind of viral marketing, I am just so pumped for Baby Driver to come out. <laughs> Pope Francis opened a laundromat for homeless people. Hey, <laughs> who does this guy think he is? <laughs> the Pope? <laughs> <laughs> President Trump has threatened to send an armada to the Pacific to deal with North Korea. When asked what his plans are should North Korea retaliate, Trump responded, D6. <laughs> a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cookbook is going to be published. I, okay, it's just a piece of paper with a picture of a pizza on it, because pizza's like their whole thing, they're not strong characters. <laughs> a man put out an ad on Craigslist saying he will pay $400 to buy human skin. In Steve Bannon's defense, he was all out of skin. <laughs> NASA discovered that Saturn has a moon capable of supporting human life. This just in, Donald Trump has bombed Saturn's moon. <laughs> a recent study by Google found that teens think Google is cool. A recent study by Bing found nothing, because everyone took Google study instead. <laughs> Bernie Sanders recently announced his new podcast and other news. Type in promo code Universal Healthcare on Blue Apron to get your first three meals free. <laughs> <laughs> We'd like to take this time to say breaking news is proudly sponsored by United Airlines. United Airlines, we give complimentary peanuts exclusively to people with peanut allergies. <laughs> in a recent press conference, Sean Spicer called concentration camps Holocaust centers. When asked where he learned that, Spicer responded at a Knowledge Factory! <laughs> Breaking News is now sponsored by United Airlines. United Airlines, now showing a performance of Fight Club live on every flight. <laughs> and that's the news! <laughs> Wait, we're gonna, this is our last Tosta commercial. Oh, I think so. I never thought I'd miss it so much. Let's savor it one last time. We'll, we'll be, be right, right back. back. Have no place to go. Have no place to go. Darling, have no place to go. Have no place to go. What news do we have, Miranda? Well, Trump administration's proposed budget includes cuts to education, the EPA, and the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, which funds both PBS and NPR. Here to comment on how Trump's new budget would change public radio is NPR's biggest personality, mm -hmm. Greg Sweaters. Thank you for having me here. It's Tuesday, March 28th. Tonight, recycling. <laughs> I'm um, sorry, Greg, could you, could you speak up, like, a little bit? Oh, I, I apologize. Thank you. It's Tuesday, April 4th. <laughs> Tonight, core values. <laughs> Dr. Beth Nabrockian drops by to give us an exclusive look at the brain. I'm sorry, you can't invite another guest on our show. Dr. Beth Nabrockian. I apologize. When we come back, we'll be talking to Miranda and Paula about what it's like to break the news. Welcome back. <laughs> Support for this program comes from Squarespace. Squarespace is the easy to use, all in one website building platform that includes customizable templates, drag and drop tools, 24 seven support, and e-commerce. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You're not allowed to advertise anything on the Emerson channel that actually isn't another Emerson show. Yeah. Act one, women in chains. <laughs> Joining us to talk about the experience of modern womanhood, Miranda and Paula. Huh. What? We didn't. Oh my God! Thank you for having us. <laughs> the modern woman, always on the go, always working hard to get the job, raise the family, have it all. Meet 
Miranda. She's a full-time college student, but is having doubts about her future. I was just spending every day in my room, staring at the posters on my wall and wondering, when do I stop being a college student and start being a woman? I don't remember recording that. <laughs> when we met up with her, we took her to a room full of powerful women. <clears throat> More on that when we come back. <laughs> you guys are doing great, by the way. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, no, okay, all right. All right, cut the jazz, Greg. Cut it. You came here to be interviewed. Act two. The first it becomes the subject. Uh, so first of all, you're not allowed to eat in here. Yeah. We can't. You yeah. can't. So. Well, please. Please. <laughs> Pretty soon, I won't. I won't be allowed. I won't be allowed to do much of anything. Why, why is that? Well, under President Trump's proposed budget, funding for, the, funding for the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, from which NPR <laughs> receives a portion of its funding, will be cut to zero. Oh, God, that sounds rough. It yeah. is. I'm already living in the studio. What? But. But nothing's been passed yet. Yeah, but it's still... I know. It's just nice. Comforting. I found a nice little nook by the printer. Uh... It's warm. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what's so important about public radio? I mean, aren't there more important things the government should be yeah. funding? Oh, of course. I mean, public radio isn't as important as, say, health care or education, but it only costs roughly $1.37 per year per U.S. citizen to fund NPR. Oh, I mean, that doesn't sound too bad. Yeah, just last week I got $2 from the Tooth Fairy. Holla, stop pulling out your teeth. We talked about this. They are not going to grow back. All right, point is, it sounds like public radio is a great thing. What shows do you host? Oh, well, I'm very involved with the public radio community. I host mm -hmm. several shows. Uh, such as? Arts in the City. Piano Jazz. A few more things to consider. Star Talk. Textbook, the show. <laughs> Welcome to my hat. <laughs> Market Town. Radio Lab. Radio Cab. Cash Radio Cab. <laughs> wait, wait, don't leave me. And Latino USA. Um, wow, I'm already so bored. But you're also educated. I guess that's true. But Young women like Polly here won't be educated any longer thanks to proposed cuts to public radio. What can we do to help? Well, you can make a donation to NPR and get a tote bag as a gift. Ooh. What's in the tote bag? Pencils and raisins. <laughs> Yuck. Oh, okay, well, what if we pitch a show to NPR instead? Mm -hmm. Well, as my idol Dr. Fraser Crane would say, I'm listening. Okay. <laughs> So our show would be called Rocket Mania, mm -hmm. and we would play sounds of rockets going off and scream, oh yeah, look at that rocket. <laughs> sounds a little too exciting. What if you whispered about taxes instead? <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Greg. Thank you. For breaking news, I'm Greg Sweaters. It's Friday, March 30th. <laughs> Greg Sweaters, everybody. So as you can tell from the show and also everything else ever, things aren't going too hot down here on Earth. Mm -mm. That's right. In a case a lot of America doesn't radically change their way of thinking very soon, one of our correspondents, Stephen Bosch, has made the interesting decision to pursue life on other planets. Yeah, let's see how that's going. Yeah. So Donald Trump has recently announced his budget plan with increases to NASA's budget for space exploration with the goal of putting humans on Mars. <laughs> well, Mr. Trump, look no further because this boy wants to put his baby toesies and baby woesies on that Martian soil. But before I can go and ship off to the new, new planet, let's see if I'm qualified to go there. <laughs> okay, first things first. Am I qualified to go to Mars? I have my assistant Joe here with us today. He's going to read off the... Um, requirements to be an astronaut. So let's see if uh, this boy is qualified to be a space boy. <laughs> Fire away, Joe. Uh, are you a U.S. citizen? Yeah. 
Off to a good start. But do you have a bachelor's degree in engineering, biological, physical sciences, or mathematics? No. Is your height between 62 and 75 inches? I only know feet. Are you free from any disease? Most of the time. Foreign language skills? I see, I see. <laughs> Spanish for so-so. Do you have the normal range of motion and function functionality in all joints? <laughs> Are you free from any psychiatric disorders? Do you have 20-20 vision? Oh, yeah, I think so. So it looked like I was completely qualified to go to Mars. <laughs> now it was time to see if I was physically fit. Okay, have you had any surgeries lately? No, I'm completely healthy. Do you smoke? <laughs> smoke what? <laughs> uh, uh, doesn't specify literally anything. Tobacco, marijuana... No, of course not. <laughs> you keep looking at the cameras, uh, so if you could just look me right in the eye. Yep. And do you smoke? Uh, I don't smoke. That, you didn't even make any eye contact with me that time. I was just, looking right at you. No. Keep it on me. Okay. Do you smoke? No. Nope, you're doing that again. I don't trust you, okay? So just pee in this cup real quick, and we will see. Alright. Is this enough? Uh, that doesn't look healthy, but I'm going I'm just to. really hydrated. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll be right back and we'll test this. <laughs> Why'd you take your shirt off? Uh, some guy came in and said get comfortable. Who? Uh, a short guy flying a kite. <laughs> are you are you tripping right now? Because you you tested positive for every single drug and some that I wasn't even aware existed. Like, did did you know there's like a, a store bought meth? Yeah, I guess you do because you tested positive for it. Like, weed, CBS. meth, uh, the horse tranquilizers. Well, that helps me sleep. No, okay. <laughs> you can't go to Mars. You can't even go on the Mars ride in Disney World because no one would allow you near any kids. <laughs> So I passed my physical with flying colors. Now it was time for me to see if I was mentally ready for the nearly 17 year flight there. So I did extensive research and found out exactly what it's like to be inside a spacecraft. Uh, my friend Joe is here to uh, help me out simulate what it's like. Hey. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three, two, one. Except you all are reaching Earth's atmosphere. No! Earth. Please stop! Joe, stop! It's like you're... Shut up! Just Joe! <laughs> <laughs> I said stop! Uh, so, sorry, I didn't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you! Well, it looks like this boy is completely cut out to be the first person on Mars. Well, other than Matt Damon. <laughs> I'll see you there, buddy. Back to you, Earthlings. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think he actually ended up going to space? What? Or? No, no, it's Steve. I saw him smoking outside. <laughs> <laughs> just, just get on with the news. Yeah, so here in America, we've lost some of our lofty ideals about health care. Mm. Obamacare was just barely saved by Speaker Paul Ryan's decision to pull a House vote. Yeah. Ryan has said uh, Obamacare will remain the law of the land for the foreseeable future, but Republicans are still struggling to find an alternative. Here to pitch his alternative health care plan is a House Republican representing the state of Ohio. Please welcome... Hey, so glad to be here. Look, Miranda, Paula, everyone, you can call me Derek. I love the Daily Show, etc. <laughs> No, I'm so glad to be here representing Congress and the great men and women of the 71st District of Ohio. Obamacare is failing. Okay, so Derek, um, we've, we've been told that you still have a health care alternative despite Trump care not going through. Yes, look, obviously Paul Ryan's proposed alternative to Obamacare didn't work out. Those on all sides of the aisle took issue with it. I, however, have an amazing proposal to replace the failing Obamacare, and I think, Nate, I know everyone's going to like it. So why haven't we heard about it before? Look, as you guys know, most of politics is how you sell the product. To be honest, the best part of Trump Care was the name. It sounds better than Obamacare because it says Trump instead of Obama. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't really think that that's, that's why just, it's not true. Didn't, I don't. Yeah. It's true. That's why people like me hated Obamacare but didn't hate the Affordable Care Act quite as much. <laughs> it's all about the name, which is why my proposed health care alternative 
will probably never even make it through the house. Um, what is your health care bill called? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> That's horrifying. What? Why? The Americans Eaten by Lions oh, Healthcare no, Bill? Oh, no, no, it's Eten Millions Care. <laughs> it's from the Alsace Lorraine region of France. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, literally everyone will read that as Eaten by Lions. Yeah. Allow me to explain so much better. Uh, that does not explain anything. No, no, you, you, you say that your last name is isn't eaten by lions, and then you present us with a graphic that prominently features a lion devouring what appears to be a human man holding a caduceus. Mm. Um, that's unrelated. That image shows how strong this bill is. We are going to devour sickness. I don't know how I could convey this any better. Um. Yeah, but the man is the one getting eaten. Mm -hmm. No, he's a metaphor. Look at his t-shirt. It says sickness. <laughs> and then on the lion, it says human. See? Um, it's there. Sorry, but shouldn't the human be the metaphor for humans? That wouldn't be a metaphor. <laughs> That's true. Um, so, Derek, what exactly is in Eaten by Lions care? That's what the media is calling it, yes, but it's just a strong, solid health care bill. Look, we are going to get rid of the disastrous health care mandate. We are going to allow people to purchase insurance across state lines, etc. All the Republican health care stuff, except even better. Okay, Trump care was a massive failure, and this pretty much sounds like the exact same thing, so. Yeah, except worse, since it's called Eaten by Lions care. Guys, no. Look, we're going to have everything you could want in a health care bill. We'll reel in the expansion of Medicaid, for instance. Uh, sure. Yeah, no, that's a thing that conservatives seem to want for some reason. No one will lose their <clears throat> Medicaid coverage, however, because we'll also be charging you five cents per cotton swab, ten cents per Band-Aid, and we'll be enforcing a strict BYOTD policy. BYOTD? Bring your own tongue depressors. BYOTD. <laughs> that's insane. You know, no, no. Wait a second, Paula. It's actually pretty reasonable. Because, you know, I mean, a box of popsicle sticks is pretty affordable. I mean, I guess that's true. Hey, look, no. No, 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 that won't do at all. <laughs> what? Look, they need to be medical tongue depressors, which are wider and shorter than the typical popsicle stick. <laughs> they can be purchased easily from many online providers for a mere $16. <laughs> and if you don't end up using them all, they're also a healthy and convenient snack. Mmm, <laughs> yummy. Okay, um, Derek, could you please mm. tell us something else? Anything good about Eaten by Lions Care, please. Well, Paula will certainly promise coverage for pre existing conditions. Okay. okay, all right, we can work with that. But if you do have a pre existing condition, once a month you've got to get rid of all the blood in your body. <laughs> That's bad blood. <laughs> okay, yeah. No, what? Why? We don't want that blood. Yucky. <laughs> once you've gotten rid of it, we'll store it safely underground. Oh. Again? Why? Have you heard of the gold standard? Because this is like that, but with blood. <laughs> Allow me to explain. This should clarify some, if not all, of your questions. Jesus Christ. Uh, this raises so many more. Oh, yeah. no, no. Look, I don't think so. Because look, see here, you know, look, health care. And as you'll see on there, it's all there, uh, et cetera. You just follow the trail, et cetera. S, uh, uh, buddy, that, that just, no. it's not helping at all. Oh. Look. Wait, wait, how do you even get the blood out? You get eaten by lions. <laughs> Derek Eton by B. Leones, everyone. Oh, thank you. It's been over a month since our actual president tweeted that the previous president wiretapped him without any evidence. And he still stands by it. Our very own correspondent, Evie Oliveira, went out and did an investigative report on wiretapping. Take a look. So it all started one afternoon when I was browsing some internet news. Can you believe this? President Donald J. Trump actually accused the Obama administration of wiretapping his campaign while ex-president Obama was still in office. These claims were debunked by White House officials, obviously. 
It was a ridiculous claim to make anyway, but it did start to make me think about the systems put in place here and everywhere. We live systems, breathe systems, die in the system. They are all around us. The systems of government, the systems of our schools and colleges, the Dewey Decimal System, the respiratory system, and most importantly, the breaking news system. <laughs> oh, uh, hey, Abby, like, uh, good job on the uh, presentation. Oh, thanks so much, Joe. <laughs> I wondered, how did Joe know about my presentation on Disney Cruise Desk through the ages? <laughs> but then, the answer was obvious. Joe was wiretapping me. Amazon.com and purchase some classic wiretapping equipment, or bugs, as I've learned. Not actual bugs. I hate bugs. Bugs are scary. A few anti-spy bug ghost detection devices, just to cover all my bases. And finally, my most important purchase, a manual on how to use all of this crazy technology. Have this time now. Joe gets out of class at four o'clock. What we're gonna do is we're gonna insert this thing, this chip, this wiretapping chip into his back. Shrek versus human Shrek. <laughs> At first, Joe wasn't all that interesting, but then I struck gold. Joe was clearly plotting with some other Emerson Channel fat cats. Uh, thank you all so much for meeting with me. I'm very excited that it's time for this to come to fruition. It's not controversial, it's scary, it's unlike anything anyone's ever done or been a part of before. So, um, if we can keep this a secret, that would be great. <coughs> Alright, okay, okay, okay. How is this? Trump, it's Trump, but like a horse on top, and then like also a horse on bottom. Oh, oh. oh dude, that's a good one. Yeah, I'm good. Hey, I know. I mean, where have you been? You've been like missing meetings for so long. I knew it. I knew it, sneaky, sneaky, Joe's a cool. You thought I wouldn't figure it out. You thought I wouldn't know. Um, if you don't like, like, the Trump as a horse bit, we can, we can cut it, I guess. I'm, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you spying on me this whole time, trying to oust me in front of breaking news. You're a mean boy, and this isn't over. What? Evie, <laughs> take a shower. <laughs> what was I supposed to say? Guys, look at this picture of Chumley. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, she thinks you've been wiretapping her ever since you commented on her presentation. What? But, wait, I... She texted me about that. Look, right. Actually, 
wait, now that I think about it, now that I think about it, have you seen Evie since she burst into our meeting? Yeah. No, I guess not. Hope she's okay. Yeah. Well, in other news, Trump's new budget has allocated $2 billion into his proposal for the infamous wall. Yep, looks like his evil scheme to build a wall is finally coming to fruition. And he's gonna make Mexico pay for it. Uh, no, we, America, are paying for it. Oh, okay, okay yeah, but, sh but, but Mexico's gonna, like, reimburse us. We just have to, mm. I don't know, like, keep, keep their seats. <laughs> Do you really trust Donald Trump to keep receipts? I should have seen that one coming. Yeah. Several contractors are competing to have their proposal chosen for the job. We were actually lucky enough to get uh, a hold of one of those contractors. Please welcome Chester Wall Jackson. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Paranda Mala. Thank you so much for letting me pitch, uh, try my pitch on y'all. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, so, Chester, what makes your proposal stand out from the rest? Hmm. We saddle up, darlings, because this is the Kentucky kicker. My material will be the most lightweight, cost-effective, yet durable option. Okay, okay, so you're gonna build, like, uh, with cobblestone or steel, <laughs> or, uh... No, 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 no. Uh, we have a saying in the South, uh, you throw a turkey with no legs in a pool, it's just gonna drown. <laughs> well, I'm using the finest material known to man, Legos. <laughs> you mean, uh, like the toy? They say that in the South? No, the bricks. I'm not using no darn tuned figurines. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, you're, you're proposing to use plastic toy bricks to, to build the border wall. I know it sounds a little wacko, jacko, whack attack, take a whack of my hacky sack, but <laughs> before you go make this into a sound bit to make me sound like a crazy southerner, let me break it down for you in uh, four mullet points. Yeah, that... That sounds like a good idea. Uh, I'll be honest, right now it doesn't make a lot of sense. Okay, so. well, uh, number one, right off the bat, my experience, I've been laying Lego bricks for 25 years. <laughs> 25. How old are you? I, well, I'm 24, but I'm oh. gonna be 27 in June. <laughs> um, okay, uh, that aside, uh, <laughs> you started really young. I mean, I guess it makes sense. You know, they're toys. They're yeah. meant for kids. Okay. <laughs> toys? No, toys is what you get in a kid's meal at Bojangles. <laughs> is that supposed to be, like, a restaurant? Well, number two, no-brainer. Legos are aesthetically pleasing. They're colorful. We have a saying in the South, you can fix up a barn, but the wood will kind of still be moldy. You know, that one actually makes sense. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I guess the colors would distract from the xenophobia that the wall stands for. Hmm. All right, all right, okay. <laughs> Point number uh, three, they're versatile. I've seen Legos used just to make about anything and everything on God's green earth. I've seen them used to make a, a dinosaur, a, the Death Star, a, a, a skeleton of a dinosaur, a, a bionicles. And in case you didn't know what bionicles are, they're robots. And we have a saying in the South, robots are just metal people. Okay, no, no, I know for a fact that that's not a saying. Okay, well, number four. Ooh-wee, these little bow weevils are durable. <laughs> Uh, my dog Rick passed away recently, and uh, let me tell you the darndest thing. When I cremated him in the fire pit in my backyard, I found three Lego bricks and a Speed Racer figurine in his ashes. Uh, yeah, that's insane. And mind you, I left him in my garage for about two weeks after he died. Lord help me, my old brain forgets sometimes. You are 26. Yeah. And uh, it gets hot as the devil in there. You think the heat would catalyze the stomach acids and bubble up and melt the dang nibblers, but no siree, those little bricks held strong. Um, I'm not sure I get what you're trying to say. Uh, let me paint this picture for you. It was so hot in that garage that old Rick was sweating. And a lot of dogs don't even do that. Rick was very, very wet. He was soggy, really, just leaking. <laughs> Uh, okay, okay, uh, so about the border wall that we were previously I don't discussing. think you're really getting this, guys. It was as if someone left a hose running under <laughs> Little Rick. There was a steady, heavy stream running down the block. Kids were, uh, making paper boats and sailing them down Raging Rick Rapids. Please, please stop, please. Yeah, um, I'm sorry, Chester, but you cannot be on the show anymore. Well, Chester can't be on the show anymore, but you know who can be? Oh, f**k. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's right, guys. If you thought my proposal was childish, the entire building of a wall itself is ridiculous. I mean, hey, Donald Trump, ever heard of ladders, huh? <laughs> How about airplanes or people getting shot out of cannonballs, huh? Yeah, that's what I thought, but you know what? That's just my... Don't you, don't you say it, don't oh you say God. it, Stephen Bosch. My two cents. No! God damn it! Get out of here, Steve. Get, leave. Get out Bye. of my sight, Steve. Bye. Thank Sorry. you. <laughs> well, I guess this is it. One last final hurrah. One more ride, cowboy. The nail in the mahogany coffin. We decided on Redwood. Regardless, thank you guys for being here. It means a lot. Yeah, and for being such good audience members, we have a special treat for you. You all get to watch us open our time capsule. Yeah! Earlier this semester, Paula and I put together a box of things we thought would make us feel better when our time at Breaking News came to a close. So, without further ado... Oh! Good. Okay, ooh, what do we have here? Oh, a mozzarella stick! Ah! It's aged considerably well. <laughs> I'll put this bad boy away for later. Paula? Okay, let's see, what else? Ah! An autographed photo of Bob Saget! Everyone's favorite hot dance super crush soulmate. Mm. Oh my god. Mine's Dennis Quaid. Ew. <laughs> okay, <laughs> what else? Oh, and some pencils! I've been running low on firewood. Mm. <laughs> Okay. And uh, oh, last but not least, um, a letter we wrote to our future selves. Mm. I'm gonna cry. No. Please don't. Dear Miranda and Paula. Hi ladies. Paula, I hope by now you've taken care of that nasty UTI. Uh, yeah, I did not. <laughs> Miranda, by now you should be married with kids and uh, run a small but lucrative family-owned tapas restaurant. What? What? I like to spice things up. Hopefully you both had a great time hosting Breaking News this semester. And don't forget to thank the best dang writer's room this side of the grass. Hmm. <laughs> and, the amazing, <laughs> and the amazing production team that was able to build us from the ground up. Literally, we are both made of small wooden parts. Hmm. And of course, don't forget to settle the score that has inevitably erupted between your respective, adoring, bordering on cult-like obsessive fans. Okay, Murfandas. Pollers. Stop meeting in parking lots and dance battling. It's bad press for us. On a similar note, stop arranging mixers. Mm. We don't want you interbreeding. It makes us uncomfortable. Mm. Oh, and uh, who's the letter? Last but not least, remember to thank each other for finally being able to capitalize off your raging codependency. <laughs> we were starting to get worried. We really didn't think you'd ever make other friends. Oh. Have we, though? Yeah. Anyway, I guess this is really it. We've milked every last drop from the teat of this network show. Yeah. So I guess, uh, time to get out of here. Did you have any specific way you wanted to... I don't know, I was thinking like traditional Japanese seppuku, perhaps? Uh, I was actually thinking quicksand. I want to dye the driest possible. Oh, yeah. What are you guys talking about? Well, we figured the rules were once the show ends, the hosts have to die. Yeah, to preserve the secrets behind the desk. Yeah, um, and to ensure that our spirits choose the next host. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no, we're just gonna go to Chili's, so if you wanna come along. Really? Oh my, yeah. my mom is gonna love this. Yeah, my mom too. <laughs> uh, wow. Uh, well, I guess I should cancel the white doves I imported from Costa Rica for our joint funeral extravaganza. Oh my god, that was gonna be fun. Yeah. <laughs> to everyone watching, stay aware, stay active, and keep fighting. And check out our website for merch. <laughs> I've been Miranda Fane. And I've been Paula Seves. That's, That's our show. show. Have, Have a good, good night. night. <laughs> 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 <laughs>